Now, once you have Daniel chapter 11, we're also going to turn to Revelation 16. Revelation 16. So we're going to look at three passages. Tonight, I would ask for you to turn to three passages. Daniel chapter 11, Revelation chapter 16, and Revelation chapter 9. So, you got to understand this. What I believe is that the Antichrist, he's going to have his New World Order system. But I mentioned this in several of my teachings as well. He has a New World Order system, and then there's also going to be another group, is going to be what I call it rogue nations. Rogue nations. So these rogue nations, they're going to consist of two groups. They're going to com consist of communists. Hence, you have Russia and its allies, I would say. Russia and its allies. I know Russia is not considered to be a communist country today, technically, but to be quite honest, a lot of its system is still very similar, and they are very sympathetic toward this party and toward this group. So it doesn't change that fact. Not only that, Muslim nations, Muslim nations. So here is where we see Gog and Magog at Ezekiel 38. These are Gog and Magog. These will have a separate role that God's going to use them for, or the devil. But the Antichrist, he will have his New World Order system. This is where you have your United Nations. The Antichrist will rule over this. In this, he will proclaim peace. Over here, you see natural catastrophe and chaos. You see the white horse of Revelation 6 right here, and then you see the red horse of Revelation 6 right here. Now, let's talk about China's role at the end times. This will be very interesting. What will the Antichrist do with China, and as well as Russia and their allies, and the Muslim nations? What's going to happen? Start off with Revelation chapter 16. First of all, they're going to play a role in Armageddon. Armageddon. Look at Revelation chapter 16 and verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river. Where is the location? Euphrates. Okay, it's going to be very important to understand this location. So the Euphrates River. God's going to mention this location several times. And then he's going to mention one location. Now, what is this usually called, the Antichrist sort of nation? The, where we get our modern updated technology and civilization. It's called what? Western, right? You always hear that term, Western civilization. Western, Western. This one will be East. And the Bible talks quite several times about this East right here. So what is the East role? There's going to be the kings of the East. They're going to come from the East of Euphrates. What's at the East of Euphrates? There's a whole bunch of nations. And the bigger ones are obviously Russia and China, the bigger nations toward the east. Now let's keep reading right here. Revelation chapter 16 and then verse 12 again. And the water thereof was dried up that the way of the who? Kings of the east might be prepared. So God, what's going to, what God is going to do is that God is going to dry up the Euphrates River at the end times. And as he dries this Euphrates River up, these people up in Russia, China, and other eastern nations, they're going to come down through Armageddon. Why? Because they're going to be attacking the nation of Israel. Let's keep reading right here. Verse 13, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto who? The kings of the earth and of the whole world. See, one world, United Nations. These guys are getting involved too. To gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Armageddon, they're coming down. Look at verse 16. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue what? Armageddon. Armageddon war is going to happen. And what's going to happen is that the United Nations under the Antichrist as well as these rogue nations from the east, they're all going to come down, and then they're all going to battle right here. Israel is going to be a hot spot, you got to realize. Israel is going to be a hot spot. It's going to be attacked from west and east. It's going to be attacked west and east. 
And they're going to come down and God with one fell swoop like that. Now, the thing to understand is that uh, I have no doubt that the Antichrist, because of Revelation 6, it says he's going for conquering and to conquer. So because of that, which nations is he going to be struggling with? That's something important to understand. Go to Daniel 11. Daniel 11. Thus, you got rogue nations. See? Rogue nations. They will give the Antichrist a little bit of a hard time. You're going to notice that. Look at Daniel chapter 11. Now, look what happens right here. Notice who the Antichrist is having trouble with. In verse 40, And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. He shall enter also into the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown. But these shall escape out of his hand. What nations escape? Even Edom and Moab and the chief of the children of Ammon. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver and over all the precious things of Egypt. And the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. Now, what you're going to find out right here is that this context is following the Antichrist. How do you know that? Because all you have to do is look at verse 37 and 38 and verse 36. And we mentioned those verses so many times. Who is Daniel 11 verses 36? All the way to the end of verse 45, who is it referring to? See, it's Antichrist. I mentioned to that to you over and over again, so I'm not going to expound on this. So I'm going to take it for granted you believe it. So the Antichrist is found at Daniel chapter 11, verse 36 and onward. That's the context. The Antichrist, you notice right here, who is he having struggles with? You notice all these nations that consist mostly of what? Muslims. Muslims. So he's going to be having trouble with them. But you're also going to notice right here while he's having trouble, look at verse 44. So verse 43, he's conquering them. 44, but tidings out of where? The east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. Out of the north, he's going to have trouble. But also out of the east. So remember, Daniel is speaking right here in a location of Israel. Now, the north of Israel is going to be where Syria is. Hence, that's why the Antichrist is going to be Syrian. He is going to be Syrian. But I'm not going to expound on that. I already taught that many times in several videos. But you'll notice right here he's getting trouble out of the east as well. So who are the nations that are located at the east? All kinds of nations. But definitely... It's obviously going to include the two largest ones you can think of, Russia and China. So he's going to be having trouble with these guys. But the Antichrist, I have no doubt that he's going to have some sort of control over them as well, which is not hard to believe with today's current events. You notice how the relationships with Russia and China is on and off, on and off, on and off. Why not the Antichrist as well? It's going to be on and off. So they're going to aid the Antichrist in some things, especially when it comes to the nation of Israel. When it comes to the nation of Israel, they're going to be aiding. And what God's going to do, man, he's going to wipe out all, it doesn't matter which nation you are. You can be one world power under the Antichrist. You can be siding with the rogue nations, with the Muslims and communists who are growing so much in dominance and power. It doesn't matter. God just one fell so like that, protecting his little nation of Israel. Not a problem for him. But now let's look at Revelation chapter 9. Revelation chapter 9. You want to see the numbers right here? This is huge. All right, huge. Look at Revelation chapter 9, verse 14. Now, if you remember my other teaching concerning about China... I mentioned that it's extremely large concerning millions, right? A lot of you were very shocked about how many millions of Protestants there were, right? That's not hard to believe because you've got to realize how literally humongous China is with its millions. Yeah. So because there are millions, sure, millions of Protestants, but there are millions more 
who are of this uh, communism and of other different religions. So it's not a problem. So there are literally millions. So, wow, if they're that big pastor, then they, the Antichrist, no wonder he will have a hard time with them, huh? Yeah. Look at this one. God is going to use the, these group of people out of the East. He's going to use these people to punish the Antichrist world. Didn't you know that? And it's going to be demonic forces involved. Satan, he doesn't make a pact with one guy. He makes a pact and covenant with many different people. And if you're familiar already with the conspiracy realm, you notice it's not a problem for the devil to make a pact and deals with all kinds of different elites and groups of people. And these groups of people, if you study the history and current events, they will even turn against each other too. That's not a problem with Satan. Now let's look at Revelation chapter 9, verse 14. Saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Now, look at this. Bound in Euphrates. Isn't that interesting? Who is bound? Look at the book of Peter, 2 Peter, please. 2 Peter, chapter 2. Who is bound? Who is bound? Reserved for judgment. Now, it says judgment. It doesn't say great white throne judgment. It says judgment. Yeah. So it can refer to any sort of judgment the Lord chooses and selects. So these fallen angels who are locked up in Tartarus, God's going to loose up four. And he's going to loose up four out of Tartarus for his judgment of the sixth trumpet to judge the wicked world under the Antichrist system. Look at 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2, and then uh, you'll notice right here that at verse 4, For if God spare not the angels that sinned, see that fallen angels, but cast them down to where? Hell, and deliver them into what? Chains of darkness, bound, to be reserved unto what? Judgment. Now, if in my other teaching, I mentioned about one of the portals of hell is located close to where? Close to this direction, this location, where Israel is, one of the portals of hell. So by loosing up one of the portals of hell right here, as 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4, close to where Sodom and Gomorrah sunk into hell, Korah, Dathan, and Byram fell into hell, close to those locations, he loosed up and comes out these four angels. And what these four angels are going to do is that they're not going to be helping the Antichrist world system right here. They're going to be going toward this direction right here. Look at this. Go back to Revelation 9. Revelation 9, verse 15. The four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay how many people? Isn't that a lot of people? A third of men, kind, slaughter. You need a huge number for that. Use some common sense by looking at today's current events. Which numbers would be the most logical of the nations who have the numbers who can wipe out this many toward the east? East. Oh, wow, yeah. Now keep reading right here. Keep reading right here. And the number of the army of the horsemen were what? 200,000 thousand. Do you know what that is? 200 million. 200 million. That's not a problem with the rogue nations because how many Protestants were there when we mentioned millions? Yeah, so many millions. It's not a problem with communists and other rogue nations. So remember, it's not just China. China makes up millions. That's huge. I could guess maybe China could make up a majority of this, but it's not just China. You got a lot of nations at the East as well. But look at this. These horses, this is not normal human beings right here. Look at verse 17. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and of jacinths and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the head of lions. And out of their mouths issue fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed, by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone. See, hell accompanies this. So isn't it a coincidence when these guys come out of hell, what are they bringing? They're bringing the powers of hell with them. And with these powers of hell with them, 
If you compare Revelation 9 with Revelation 16, remember God dries up Euphrates for his judgment, right? Revelation 16 goes hand in hand with Revelation 9. So it's talking about the same event right here, the same event. And when these guys come out, the powers of hell follow these four angels. While the Antichrist sets up something with this new world order, these four fallen angels from Tartarus, these Tartarus angels will come out and get these guys involved. And when they get these guys involved, the powers of hell combine with the 200 million. And through this pact and this covenant and this combination of power, which is no surprise because the Western nations are doing that too anywhere. They're, anyway, they're combining demonic powers with their armies. So that's not so hard to believe. Remember, the Antichrist, the false prophet, they're bringing their powers in this Western world, in this one world government. Why is it hard for these bunch to be involved like that? But let's keep reading right here. Uh, by these three was the third part of men killed. Uh, let's look at verse 19. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto scorpions and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands. They, sh they should not worship devils, and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone, and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Isn't that amazing? God sends a huge slaughter to wipe out a third of the population. In spite of all this, mankind is too proud because it's not a surprise when you look at today when the Lord sends them warning after warning and then our Western civilization and world, our United Nations, they always try to rationalize everything and trying to say that it's not the judgment of God. People who preach about that, they're filled with hatred. You're not sensitive to these countries' feelings of what they're going through so much hurt. And thus, they do not repent of their wickedness. And they will still hold to their wicked system. So the Antichrist, you'll notice that he has a power play and struggle with these rogue nations. And they're going to get involved right here, these rogue nations. And the, the, it's going to be on and off, the relationship, on and off. And look at this number right here. That's why there's so many. Uh, Revelation 7, let's close it right here, Revelation 7. If there were that many millions of Protestants in China, it would make sense why there would be possibly, possibly, that huge of a number in China and eastern areas too. There would be that huge of a number from them. So Satan, he's going to have to use some common sense. He can't use peace because the numbers are too huge. He has to use two systems that is infamous throughout history to force conversions, which is why this religion is the fastest growing because it doesn't use peace. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, that's, that's why this system grows very strongly. Why? They use dictatorship. Yeah. That's the reason why. So Satan knows in order to control these millions of saints possibly in the end times, because there are that many huge numbers of Protestants today, he's going to have to use force. So look at Revelation 7, verse 9. This is not Israel. Look at verse 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a what? Great multitude, which what? No man can number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. These are the tribulation saints out of different nations. Verse 14, And I said unto them, Sir, thou knowest, and he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. See that? So it's not going to be a surprise that there are that millions of numbers through China and through those locations. Possibly, possibly. Because in Revelation 7, it gives, that, it gives a clear statement. There's going to be a huge number that no man can number right there. So if Satan is going to have these many people sprouting out in the east, how is he going to control it? It's not through peace. It's going to be through rogue. It's going to be through force, by force.